Shall I go to the club or straight home, sir? Home, Edward, by all means. Home. My eyes are giving me the old net. It's been a long trip, Mr. Williams. I guess I'm getting a little bit too old for these kind of jaunts. Well, I wanted to see California, and I saw it. Feel pretty good, however, except for these darned eyes. Well, don't forget to stop at the first drugstore and have that prescription refilled. It's the only thing that gives me any relief. There's a drugstore at the next corner, sir. Well, Edward, I'm glad we'll soon be home. Nothing like the peace and quiet of home. To me, Buckle. What's the matter? Can a guy get some exercise if he wants to? What's he? I ain't done nothing. Maybe I haven't, and then again, maybe I have. Hold still now. Pat! Pat! Hold it, Pat! Somebody just stuck up the jewelry store down the street. Hey, let go of me! I ain't got no stick if I tell you. Oh, no, come along with you. Get back. Get back. Get back, Paul. Hold up. I'm murdered, sir. Anybody see it? I saw it. I was sitting here in my car. The fellow came running out of the store and he tried to shoot me, too. His gun misfired. Cassidy, Th take the man's name and address. Morgan, call the ambulance. Don't let anybody come into this store. Right, sir. Did you know the man's face if you ever saw him again? Know his face? I'll never forget him. That's him. That's him. That's the man who came running out of the store and tried to shoot me. Are you positive this is the man you saw coming out of the store? How could I forget a face like that? I tell you, the guy's nuts. I've never seen him in my life before. Take him in. I'm sorry, sir. I'm afraid you'll have to go along, too. Edward, you follow the police car. Yes, sir. Break it up, boys. All right, move along now, people. Come on, move along, will you? I appreciate everything you say, Mrs. Scalza, but the evidence against your son Johnny is almost beyond question. Johnny is a good a boy. He no can do this. Believe, Mr. Drum, my Johnny, he no kill nobody. He work a hard, he bring a home with a pay. He no good a boy, Mr. Drum. Yes, yes, he has been working steadily. And outside of that fracas several years ago, has a fine record. Some boys throw stone through window, little kids. But they don't hurt nobody. True, no one was hurt. But the window was in a tobacco store and some goods were missing. Johnny got caught and received a suspended sentence. What I do, Mr. Trump? Maybe they kill my Johnny. What I do, please. Mrs. Scalza, once when I was just starting the practice of law, your husband did me a great favor. Maybe I can help Johnny. There isn't much hope, but I'll try. You save my Johnny. Save my Johnny. Junior? Yes, Mother? Call Daddy to breakfast. Daddy! Breakfast! Okay, son. I'm worried about that case, Mary. But, Walter, you are doing everything you can. Yes, and it isn't enough, Mary. This boy, Johnny Scalza, is going to the chair. I'm helpless against the testimony of that eyewitness. The lad's innocent. I'd almost stake my life on it. But I can't prove it. Who is the witness? A Robert Williams, wealthy silk manufacturer. Been out to the coast and back on an auto tour. 
almost home when he asked his chauffeur to stop at the drugstore and get him some medicine. While he's waiting in the car, the jeweler is murdered and the bandit runs out. He swears Johnny was the bandit. And there we are, the word of a reputable businessman against a one-time offender. We haven't got a chance. Daddy! Look at the picture I took of Mother. Isn't it funny? <laughs> <laughs> Amusing, isn't it? I was puttering in the garden and Junior snapped me through the window of the car. Mary, I've got an idea. I want you to show me just where you were standing when this picture was taken. Junior was kneeling on the front seat of the car and snapped me through this rear door window. I can't see what you're so excited about. Mary, I think we found something that might help the case. Yes, sir, I think we found something. Proceed with your witness. Mr. Robert Williams. Mr. Williams, before adjourning for lunch, you testified as to the actual happenings on this night in question. You said that you got a good look at the murderer as he rushed out of the jewelry store and ran away. That's right. He turned and looked right at me. I shall never forget his face. If it please the court, I would like to ask that the defendant rise for the purpose of identification. The prisoner will please rise. Is that the man you saw coming out of the jewelry store with a smoking revolver in his hand? That is the man. That is all. Your witness. Your chauffeur, Edward Albertson, testified that during your trip to California and back, Mr. Williams, you had quite a lot of trouble with your eyes. No trouble as far as my actual vision was concerned. I had some pretty bad headaches. You had no theory as to the cause for this distress? I object to this line of questioning. It is entirely incompetent, irrelevant, and immaterial. If it please the court, I propose to prove by competent witnesses that Mr. Williams was honestly mistaken in his identification of my client. I am proceeding on that line. Objection overruled. Will the stenographer repeat the question? You had no theory as to the cause of this distress? Well, no particular theory. I just figured it was perhaps because of my age, something like that. You have factories in New Jersey and Pennsylvania, have you not, Mr. Williams? Yes, I have two plants in New Jersey and one in Pennsylvania. You visit them quite often? Well, nearly every other day. Sometimes I make them all in one day. That means that you are driven to them, of course, and that you spend a fair part of the day viewing the scenery from your car windows? That's right. Edward does the driving and I take it easy in the rear seat. That is all. The prosecution rests. Mr. Drummond, you will present your case. Call the first witness. Dr. Phineas Colebrook. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear the evidence you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Dr. Colebrook, did the witness, Mr. Williams, seek your professional services lately? Mr. Williams came to me for examination of his eyes. What were your findings? I found the patient was suffering from severe eye fatigue, loss of equilibrium, and marked symptoms of dizziness. Your witness? No cross-examination. 
Mr. George Fredericks. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear the evidence you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me God. I do. Mr. Fredericks, you are in the glass business? I am, sir. For how long? Over a period of 25 years. You are familiar with all types and processes of glass manufacture? Yes, I am. Mr. Fredericks, I want to ask you something about the glass used in automobiles. For example, what kind of glass is used in windshields? Safety plate glass. That's used in all automobile windshields. Is that the same kind of glass that is used in the side windows? No, not always. Some motor cars have the cheaper safety sheet glass in the side windows. If it please the court, I wish to enter this section of glass as Exhibit A. Mr. Fredericks, with Mr. Williams' permission, I have removed this glass from the door of his car. I want you to identify it for me as to type. This is safety sheet glass. Your witness. No cross-examination. Dr. Winthrop. Raise your right hand. You solemnly swear the evidence you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Dr. Winthrop, you are an eyesight specialist? That is correct. You've also been an instructor at many of our leading universities. Yes, I have taught and lectured at many of our institutes of learning. We will concede that Dr. Winthrop is an authority and expert on the eye and its functions. Thank you. Now, Dr. Winthrop, as an expert on the eye, I ask you, what are the latest findings in the field of eye fatigue? Well, the most authoritative findings are those of Dr. A. H. Ryan of Chicago, who recently spent many months in the study of eye fatigue caused by looking through safety sheet glass. You are familiar with the results of this investigation? Yes, quite familiar. Dr. Winthrop, will you tell us just what these findings were? Dr. Ryan found that the distorting waves on the surfaces of safety sheet glass blurred the image and resulted in eye strain. Now, first you must understand that the accommodation muscles and the external muscles of the human eye automatically strive for clear vision. Then, in normal vision, each eye perceives an individual image. Now, by closing first one eye and then the other, you will notice that these two images become one. That is, when the eyes are functioning properly. Now, this is impossible when looking through safety sheet glass at an angle. For the series of surface waves act as uh, lenses and cause each eye to receive a different image. And, of course, the effect of this distortion and resulting eye strain are materially increased when looking at images through the glass as seen from a moving automobile, bus, or train. Yes. Motion greatly increases the effect of distortion when one is looking through safety sheet glass. Uh, let me get this straight, Doctor. Uh, does this distortion occur in all kinds of safety glass? Oh, no, indeed. Safety plate glass is free from the distortion waves that are found in safety sheet glass. It is ground and polished, the same as a fine camera lens or the lenses and eyeglasses. The importance of this is recognized in the universal use of safety plate glass for windshields and motor cars. You imply that the makers of some automobiles give plate glass protection only to the eyes of the driver, and that in these cars the passengers must look through safety sheet glass. That is correct. Forty percent of all the new cars sold in the first six months of 1939 had safety sheet glass in some side windows of the car. Would you consider that an alarming figure? Well, let us say, unfortunate rather than alarming. For if these cars had safety plate glass all around, it would preserve and protect the eyesight and give clear vision and comfort to all the passengers. Dr. Winthrop, this section of glass taken from the door of Mr. Williams' car has already been identified as safety sheet glass. Yes, this is safety sheet glass such as used in the side windows of many motor cars today. And as has been testified, 
This is the safety sheet glass through which Mr. Williams was looking when he claims to have seen Johnny Scalzo run out of the jewelry store. Now, Dr. Winthrop, I'd like to have you conduct a test with him, using Mr. Williams as the subject of the test. Certainly. Now, this will be entirely harmless, Mr. Williams. Now, first, I want you to look at the letters on this card. Read the letters in the second line, if you please. T-O-Z. Exactly right, and with no difficulty. Now, let us look at those same letters through this safety sheet glass. Well, naturally, the letters are still the same, though I must confess they've taken on a startling appearance. Now, Mr. Williams, will you please look at his honor? Take a good look. Mr. Williams, I will place this safety sheet glass in approximately the same position it would be in your car. There. Now tell us what you see. Well, I, I'm afraid I can't do that without offending the court. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Winthrop. That'll be all. And now, Mr. Williams, when the bandit rushed from the jewelry store, at what angle was he from him? Let me see. He was, uh, he was about, about there. Yes, that's about it. Yes. Johnny, I want you to rise. Mr. Williams and ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I want you to look long and earnestly at this defendant. Johnny, I want you to stand exactly in this spot that Mr. Williams has indicated. I'm informed that a murder suspect has been apprehended who might have an important bearing on this case. Bring the prisoner in. Mr. Williams, would you identify this man as the one you saw leaving the scene of the crime? That is not the man. Just a moment, Your Honor. Mr. Williams, from the angle you are now sitting, will you look at the suspect through this glass? Is this prisoner you are now looking at the man you saw that night? Remember, you were looking through the same glass. Why, he looks exactly like the one I saw. Johnny, I want you to stand exactly where the prisoner is standing. Now, Mr. Williams, is Johnny the man you saw? I can say positively that Johnny is not the one I saw. Okay, okay, I did it, so what? Come on, get it over with. Oh, Johnny, my Johnny. Don't cry. Look at me, I'm laughing. Come on, Mom, laugh like me. Your Honor, if it please the court, it is the wish of the prosecution that the defendant be freed. Defendant is acquitted and released from custody. Congratulations, Johnny. Young man, may I offer you my most sincere apologies? It's okay, Mr. Williams. I guess you didn't mean to do it. Of course not, Johnny. Mr. Williams actually believed that he saw you, and he'd still honestly believe it if it weren't for the experiments of Dr. Ryan. Thanks, Dr. Winthrop. It's all right, my man. Dr. Winthrop. Yes? I can't tell you how grateful I am to you for saving me from a horrible mistake. Well, I wish I could save all motorists from making the mistake of buying a car that didn't have safety plate glass all around. Car buyers may not know it, but they would protect themselves from this so unnecessary eye strain and its effects. Well, here's one car buyer you've convinced. I'm going out tomorrow and buy a new automobile. And if you don't think it's going to have genuine safety plate glass all around, you're crazy. <laughs>